Thank you for visiting our channel. Today I came out to review and also quick unbox this nice looking Android box. It is called Essential E2 a Special Edition. Yes, it's done by a company called Bus TV, which is always standing behind their software and always the updates. So that way everything works accurately. On top of that, their warranty system is another good part. And I want to mention that this comes with 4 GB of RAM, 32 GB in total storage. It comes with OS 9 and it is running AM Logic S905X3 chipset. Yes, this is their budget box, but look at their chipset. They're raising a little bit of standards. I do not want to forget that this comes with 5G Mio Mimo Wi-Fi N10100 LAN. It also comes with an IR remote. I do not want to forget, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, click the click the subscribe button. Make sure you share this with your friends and family and make sure you click the notification icon, select all in order to get notified once we have a new video out. On top of that, if you have a question, drop them at the bottom of the video. We love to help you out ASAP. And don't forget to click the click the like button. It really motivates us to make these type of videos quickly with a little more detail every time. So here you go. This is how the box really looks. It has their marking right in the bottom, right hand side. And when you look in the back part of it, it has their picture. And also it says that this is Buzz TV Essential E2 Special Edition and more markings are there. But once we slowly take the box out and we take everything out one by one, and here are all the components that are part of the box. It comes with this user manual. And once you open it, it just have some basic information on how you can connect it. Also some troubleshooting steps. And once you go to the back, it talks about the actual remote that is part of this box. And also the light indicator and some warranty information. It also comes with this little box that will tell you it's for power supply. So let's just open it up. I really like the way that they have packaged everything. In there, you will find this little power supply. This is 5 volt, 2 amps, created for Canada, United States. It's about a meter long, and this part is the one that will be connecting to the actual box. The next box is the cable, and that's just the HDMI cable. It doesn't have any marking that will tell you if it's HDMI 1.4 or 2.0. It also comes with this nice long box and this one called remote control so once you open it you will find your remote and it also comes with an energizer battery now the remote itself is inside of a plastic once you take it out it's really categorized and customized so in melt it for the actual bus tv app you can see from the top that you can also control your tv and if you need to know how the instructions in the back but I have to mention that this will only work with the TVs that are only using IR. So if you have a newer TVs, they're usually using Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and this function would not work. The remote itself is also just an IR remote. So if you are going to play with an Android box, I really suggest that you get an air mouse remote. But the everything that you see on this will work. So once you are inside of the Buzz TV app, all these functions that you see on this will be working perfectly with the box and once you flip it in the back you have the IR sensor right on the top then you have these little parts so when you put it on the floor it does not wobble I really like that little touches that they have done and also when you go to the back you have a part that you can open easily you can put two AAA battery and the batteries are energizer that are part of this box and once you close it this is how it really looks I really like this remote and the next part is the actual box. It does come inside of a little plastic so it doesn't get scratched up. But once you take it out, this is how it looks. So you can see that the logo is really nicely on the top. Then I really like that little design that they have placed on the top part of it. When you look in the front, there's nothing here. But once you turn it on, there's going to be a little LED, which we will show in this video. Going on one side of it, you have a TF card reader. You have USB 3.0 and a USB 2.0. Now go on to the back. You have an AV port, then you have an Ethernet port, which is 10100. You have an HDMI 2.1, and 
and then you have an optical audio connection so you can connect it to your stereo system and also your power which is 5 volt 2 amps on the other side there's nothing there but once you go to the bottom you have a lot of holes for ventilation you have a little sticker with your mac and serial number the best part is that these little parts also been cut just like a hexagon for their logo and also the little cuts as you can see it also have the same type of design that's not the only thing if you really zoom in it says essential e2 and there is the s E right inside of it which is a special edition that's really cool and some more information if you ever need it all right enough said about it let's get this connected all right to connect this first of all if you have an air mouse remote like I have I'm going to connect that first and then let's connect the HDMI wire and then we will connect the power and if you look closely there is a little dim blue light so as soon as you turn it on this is the first logo that you will see and then it should go to an animation and there you go this is the animation that you should see one thing i have to let you know is this has been taken from before from the 3000 series but the sound has been extracted so there's no sound to the animation while it's booting in which is a perfect thing if you have kids and here you go this is the first launch so let's go through and set it up very very quickly so as usual we will press english and then you set up your time zone you select your screen resolution now my capture card is only 1080p at the moment but if you do connect it to a 4k it will show up 4k not first thing on the list but it will be down the bottom and then it will tell you if you are zoomed in or you're zoomed out so you see these black lines around you have to select them you have to make sure that the blue line is matching right to the edge of your TV and then press done now since you're not connected via LAN connection it will ask you to connect to a Wi-Fi so you can click give it a couple of seconds and then the list will show up and you can select one of them and go ahead and connect and then once you press enter it will ask you to enter your password once you enter your password then you can go here and click on this connect button takes a couple of seconds for it to authenticate there you go it will just go in and now it will go to your main screen and here you go this is what you should see and once you go through so let's go through very quickly for the main menu you can see I really like that background but you have the buzz logo on the top then you have the Wi-Fi Bluetooth and Ethernet I'm connected via Wi-Fi we just set it up and then the date and time is right on the side mine is correct then you have live tv vod pvr and epg icons on the top if you look down you have the all apps then app store and then you can add more shortcuts for apps in the front the next thing you have settings then server settings wi-fi update and buzz utility we will try to capture as much as possible under this video but we do not want to make a very long video so here you go this is how it goes so here you go now let's go through first to some benchmarking and checking some apps so number one once you go to the main screen when you click on it there are apps that is already installed now that's not the only thing when you go in the main screen and you go down in the bottom you have settings but there's one part called update now we just received a new update on this and it's just getting ready to go towards Buzz TV 5. The one that we have on this is Buzz TV 4. You can see it right over here that the version is 4.052, but that will change very shortly. And then we're going to make another video for that, except that just get out of this. The next thing that we want to capture is going to be YouTube. Now, when you go to the settings, this is the maximum resolution that you can get. So that's not the only thing. Let's go a little bit geeky inside of it. So here we go. Here's the best part. You can see right now that it is capturing it under 1080p. There's about 342 frame drops, but you can see that it is getting it on a beautiful quality on a 60 frames per second. That's not the only thing. The color depth is right over here. And the codec that they're using is VP09, which is a really cool thing. The next thing we have done is going through and playing with some videos. So for that, we have to go to our own network. Now, the video samples that we have are old, but it is very good to play with. 
So number one, we will go to our 4K video, the one that we filmed, and this is how it looks. Again, right now we're connected via LAN, so it should not have that much of a disconnection, but you can see that everything is running properly. All the little details and everything, there's no stop to it, and the sound is proper to it too. All right, let's get out of this and let's go and play a 1080p video first. So this is our 1080p video. I'm just going to bring up the volume a little bit. And yes, it does play it perfect. I really like the way that this has been positioned and how it plays everything for us. The next thing we want to go through is going to be Geekbench 5. So for single core, we received 132. And for multi-core, we received 449, which is a really good number when you look at the RAM and also the OS and the chip on this. And the next thing we want to go to is going to be AIDA64. Once you go in, you can see the manufacturer is there, model name is there. When you go down, it says the installed RAM is 4 gigabyte. how much has been used, how much is available, and then the internal storage is 23.71. And the total internal storage that is free is 22.12. On top of that, you have Bluetooth, and it is Bluetooth, 4 plus but we know that this is running bluetooth 5.0 for some reason it just is 4 plus cpu on this is arm kotax a55 it is running on 1908 megahertz it is running on 32-bit mode but the chipset is created for 64-bit when you go down the cores that are running and the ones that are sleeping you can see CPU utilization is roughly about 51 to 61%, which is really good. The governor is interactive, which we really require, but you can see that the supported bits is V7A, which is 32-bit. Now, going under display itself, GPU itself is Molly G31, which is a single core, but the fresh rate is 60 hertz. It is running on landscape mode at the meantime and the open gl on this is 3.2 which means as playing game on this is going to be a breeze now going under network itself you can see right now the wi-fi is on now one thing that i have to always mention to you guys it says five gigahertz band is supported yeah so this is 5g network going under android itself it is android 9 pi the api is 28 but going down it has more information that you're always asking now going under terminal itself, this is really cool. You can see that the actual CPU, what temperature it has, the RAM itself, what temperature, and then the battery or the where you connect your AC adapter, what type of numbers they are getting, which is really good. It is not very, very high. Now going under Kodaks, you can see that when you scroll up a little bit, you have VP8, VP9, there you go. Also WMV2 and WMV1. H.263, MPEG-4, and there is a lot of different version of MPEG-4, MPEG-2s, and also the HEVC, H.263, and AVS-2, and also it has the Dolby Vision, but you have the VP8 and V9, which makes the colors a lot vibrant on OS 9, so it is part of it. And I've said about this, let's get out of this. The thing I want to capture is going to be speed test. Now we have already processed some, some checking with this and with the 5G network, we received 249 for our download and 32 megabit per second for our upload. Now, when we went on the second time, we received 253 for our download and you can see the arc that how much it went up and down and the 32.5 for our upload rate. Now, when we did it with the regular landline, it was pretty obvious that it works perfect with landline. It is a 10100, so you're not going to go over 100 megabits per second. So we received 93.7, and our upload rate is 32, so we received 31.7, which is a really good number. When we went last time, we received 94.3 for our download rate and 31.3 for our upload. Again, it was perfect, and it didn't give us any kind of problem. Now, all the links will be available in the bottom where you can order this from. And also, if you need more help, please ask at the bottom of the video so we can make another video for you or answer it to you. This is our review in discretion. I hope you guys like our video. If you do like it, click the click the like button, subscribe button on the top, comment on the bottom. Always 
remember to visit our own website, which is exitex.info. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and other social networking places. And thank you.